Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to draw an icon, badge and gradient based shadow in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with, I've created a new artboard. It's a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And first of all, I'm just going to left click and hold on the rectangle tool and select the polygon tool. Left click anywhere on the artboard, select a radius of your choice and just make sure that we have six sides selected and click OK. And just hold shift to scale this shape up. If the hexagon or your six sided shape that you created looks like this, that's absolutely fine. Just select it, hover around one of the corner points until you get the rotate icon appear. Hold shift and rotate 45 degrees so that the top and bottom are pointing up and down. And with your shape selected, just go and remove the stroke, select the fill and then give this a color. So select a color from your swatches palette or create a new color and just double click the swatch and make sure you have global selected. Scale this up. I'm going to just go a little bit bigger, I think. And then we can select this drop down at the very top of the screen, select align to artboard and make sure that we align this shape horizontally and vertically in the center. Next, we can left click and hold and select the rectangle tool and then draw a four sided shape that is the same dimensions as your artboard. So if you've got your smart guides turned on, it should snap nicely in place. To turn on your smart guides, go up to view and down to smart guides here. You'll see that little tick next to it that indicates they are turned on. Very helpful to line up objects and snap shapes together. So we've created our square, just go up to object, arrange and center back just to make sure that our hexagon is on top. So let's give this a different shade of blue for now so we can see this against our background. We'll double click another blue swatch, select global and click OK. So now what we can do is create our icon. So let's just left click and hold, select the ellipse tool and we're going to left click and hold shift to draw a circle. And then with the direct selection tool, we're going to go up to select, deselect. It's worth noting this shortcut because we will be using this several times in the tutorial. So we just deselect this shape and we can select this bottom anchor point by left clicking and then holding shift and clicking, just drag that down something like this and then where the pen tool is in the toolbar just left click and hold select the anchor point tool and then left click on this bottom anchor point and it will convert it from a curve to a straight edge so this icon is going to be a location pin your icon can be the same as this or it can be whatever you like that's absolutely fine it looks a little bit sharp here so we're just going to smooth out that curve by left clicking and holding on where the shaper tool is and just select the smooth tool. So just select your shape again, select the smooth tool and just left click and drag over that corner on the left and then left click and drag over this corner or curve on the right. So just smooth that out slightly. And then we can select the ellipse tool again, left click and hold shift to create a circle. Give this any color fill for now. And you see our smart guides will nicely line that up. You can scale this down as you need to. Scale it towards the center, holding shift and alt. And then with the new circle on top, that's this yellow circle here, hold shift to select the location shape itself. And in your Pathfinder palette on the right, select minus front, also known as subtract. And it will subtract that yellow circle from the location shape behind. And then now that's one shape, we can give this a color. So let's just color this white. And we can position this in the center of our hexagon. And again, holding Alt and Shift, just scale that towards the center. 
So we've created a very basic icon within a very basic badge so far. Now we can select our hexagon and we can go to Effect, Stylize and Round Corners. Select the preview box and then adjust the radius until your corners are rounded off slightly. Something like this. If you select your shape again, in the appearance palette you'll see round corners are listed and you can either click on this to edit that radius or you can click the trash can icon to delete that effect entirely. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit and start creating the gradient based shadow. So if we left click and hold on our anchor point tool and just select the pen tool. Now you'll see the smart guides come in handy here because as we hover along this line it's indicating where we can create a path from. So now we're going to create the gradient based shadow for our hexagon. So let's just left click anywhere along this path and we're going to drag out to somewhere about here but we want to make sure that this lines up along this edge here. So line it up as best you can and left click again. Now we're going to create another line here. This needs to be at a right angle to the line we've just created. So something like this, a left click and then we're going to draw this back into here. So it needs to be parallel to this edge here of our hexagon. Don't worry if you don't have it exactly lined up, so don't try and do this. It needs to be absolutely parallel. The chance that you get it bang on the line is very unlikely, but that's fine because we're going to fix that in a moment anyway. So just make sure it's parallel, left click, and then back to the starting point, or go around, it has to go around your icon. So I'm just going to go one, and then two back to the starting point. And with this shape selected, just go to Object Arrange and just send that backwards. And then we'll do that one more time. And I'll give this a different color for now. Just so it's behind everything else, but in front of our background. So now we can zoom in, select the Direct Selection tool, and we're just going to deselect any shapes at the moment. And then left click on the anchor point with the Direct Selection tool. Hold Shift and select this other anchor point and we're just going to drag these out and so it does line up. So you can see here that this nice dark blue shape here lines up with our hexagon. And we can just zoom in on the bottom as well. There we go, that's pretty close. So the next thing to do is we're going to turn this dark blue slash purple color into a gradient based shadow. So let's select this and we're going to select anywhere along the gradient slider and by default we get black to white. So let's adjust our angle. So we want the darkest part of the shadow to be closest to the hexagon shape and then along this edge here on the right this is going to be the same color as our background so it fades out, effectively blends into our background. So let's try and get this angle right first. So you may need to adjust this setting so we're trying to get the dark closest to the hexagon and balanced across both edges. So let's keep rotating this gradient around. Let's try a little bit more. Okay, so I think we're getting there now. I can check again by pulling the black out just to see where the angle is on the gradient. So we need that to line up with this. So let's just keep going slightly. There we go, I think another five degrees. There we go, that's pretty close. One, four, four. Just to get it exactly right. Then we can drag this back. And then you can adjust the gradient sliders as you like. This may take a little bit of adjusting until you get something you're happy with. And then we can select this shape and in the transparency palette, select normal and go down to multiply. And this will blend this into the background. Once you've blended that, you can then go back into the gradient palette and adjust the slider again until you get something you're happy with. 
And if you would want to adjust this further, you can select the gradient and in the transparency palette, you can drop the opacity. So there we go, we've created a shadow. We're also going to create a shadow for our location pin. So let's select our pen tool. Now we're going to left click on the bottom anchor point. We're going to go at the same angle or as close as we can. And then left click up here to create that right angle and then go back up here to the top. And just come around this circle here so we don't cut through that. And then join that back up to make that a complete shape. And again, we can go to Object, Arrange, Send Backwards, just so it's behind the location pin icon. And now we're going to go through the process of adjusting the angle of the gradient. Although actually it's remembered the same angle from before, so let's not worry about that. It's already looking good. So with this new shape selected with our gradient, we can go to transparency and select multiply from the blending options. And then go back into our gradient palette and just adjust this. So we can fade this out a bit softer and then we can reduce the transparency in the transparency palette. So I think this blue background at the moment, we've created this as a global swatch. So we can just double click on the swatch, select preview, and we can adjust the color of this and it will affect every instance of that blue within our document. So at the moment, these blues feel very different. I'm just going to make the background a little bit closer just so it matches a bit more, I think. So something something like this let's make the hexagon shadow a little bit darker and then possibly let's double click that swatch tick the preview box and make this one a bit lighter there we go that looks good to me So what you can do is you can adjust the length of your gradient as well. So with the direct selection tool, you can click on these anchor points for our shadow and just drag those out. If you want to extend the gradient, just make sure that when you drag them out, you keep them in line with these parts of your hexagon. And I'm just going to add a gradient to the background as well, just to finish off. So if we select the background, and the gradient slider and just drag one of these blue swatches onto the slider. We can click on white, just left click and drag that down to remove that altogether. Now this black is very dark. We don't want something that strong. So let's just double click on a darker blue swatch, select global, and then we'll select our background again. And this new dark blue swatch we've created, we'll drag that onto the black instead. So that's still quite strong, but we can go back into this swatch. And as we edit this global swatch, it will update within our gradient that we've created as well. So something like that. And then you can go back and adjust your colors as you need to. And I'm just going to reduce this shadow down a little bit. So the shadow for the icon, I'm just going to make that slightly less prominent by dropping the opacity down to, let's go 30%. And then I might drop this one down to 40. So lots of little adjustments just to get everything right. There we go. I think that's looking good. And then what we can do is we can right click on our background, go to object, lock selection. So this background layer is now locked. We can unlock it by going to object and unlock all. And we can select all of our objects by dragging over, go to object group, and then we can scale those up if we like and adjust the position. And there we go. 
we've created an icon, a badge and a gradient based shadow all within Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.